Hello and welcome to another unboxing. So this here is something different, not a mobile phone, not a tablet PC, but a mini PC. It's the Honda M3. Now this is the model that was just recently released that comes with the Sauron G1840. That can clock up to 2.8 gigahertz, 4 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabyte M SATA SSD on it. Now there is a bare bones model for a lot cheaper. It's about 160 US. Got this one from gearbest.com. So if you did have some spare parts lying around, you had an old Haswell i3 for example, then you could put that in there and if you had some Sodim RAM, also use that. So let's get the box out of the way. Rather large box for what it is and it does feel quite heavy too. So there we have on the back, outlining a few things that it could be used for, like, I mean, gaming, yeah, well, I wouldn't really probably do any serious gaming, uh, not on Intel HD graphics, at least, yeah, good media player, maybe, um, Office PC, possibly too, not bad for that, so there's the front of the box, and let's get this open, so the reason I got this one here is because, I mean, I have re reviewed a lot of Atom mini PCs, and... You can only do so much, really, with that 2 watt TDP that they have, even the Atom X7. Now, this is something, although it's a low-end desktop CPU that's in there, the Sauron G1840, it still has a TDP of 53 watts, so allowing us to have a lot more power. And in theory, this should be twice as fast as any Atom mini PC. Even that X7 Voyo version 3 with 128 gigabyte SSD I reviewed, this should definitely be a bit better. So here we have well packaged up with foam around either side. And here it is. Doesn't actually look that bad at all. So you see no markings on the top there. And on the side we have a power button. So here is the back with all our ports and everything. This is here for our wireless antenna. We have audio in and out puts there. Two USB 2 ports. There's our LAN. Now I'm not too sure on the speed of that one and whether it's 100 megabits per second, I think it is, or whether it's a thousand, a gigabit Ethernet. Hopefully it's a gigabit. Two USB 3 ports, VGA. That's quite rare to see that now, VGA on there. Then our full sized HDMI out. And there's our power plug. It's a very sturdy design. And the back of it has three rubber feet. We have a fan intake with no mesh over the front of it or anything like that. So that's uh, it's a bit of a pro and a con, I guess, because they could get all choked full of dust. But you'll be able to vacuum that out easier than enough, I'd say. So we have two screws there and what looks to be the exit vents there with the copper heatsink I can see in there. So I will open this up and have a little peek inside of what components they have used. Just to go over the dimensions of it, for those that want to use this maybe perhaps in a TV cabinet or something, let's have a look and see just how big it is. So it's uh, 20 centimeters by 20, I think. It's a perfect square, yes, by 20. And the height of it is not that high at all. It's, well, just under 4 centimeters. So about, looking at that, about 37 millimeters is our height of it. We'll see what else is in the box. So, uh, what looks to be an instruction manual outlining, there's our uh, LGA 1150 socket there, and that's all in Chinese. Uh, inserting the RAM, and this must actually be for just the bare bones model, actually, because that's showing all the components individually there. Okay. And we have a couple of rubber feet things. They're kind of weird design, that is. I'm not really too sure about that. And what else do we have here? So there's the wireless antenna. So it also includes a wireless uh, chipset in there, of course. We do have a wireless card. I think it's a mini PCIe card. And there's the power supply, 
which is uh, 65 watts, 19 volts, 3.42 amps. So beefy enough, at least to handle a Sauron or your Pentium G, or maybe, yeah, the i3. I think the, the i core i3 would probably be the highest you'd want to go on this. You put an i5 in there, or if you wanted to go and pop something crazy like this, like an i7, then obviously it's not going to be able to handle it, and the thermals as well, it's probably going to get way too hot with something like that. But if you do happen to have some, an old Haswell lying around or something, then you could probably make up a little media PC with this, and there's the power plug. Oh, uh, they've given me an Australian New Zealand plug for some reason. <laughs> but I'm actually in Europe. Anyway, okay, so let's have a look inside the Onda M3. So there are only two screws, top and bottom, on the back. So one here on the bottom and the other one at the top. Interesting to see. I imagine they would use BWIN or 4C SSD in there. Okay, so how this comes off, I do not know. Okay, pops up like that with a rather loud noise. It looks like this is going to come up. Okay, a bit awkward to get off. Okay, there we go. Oh, there are cables attached to this. Okay. Oh, they've actually used a full, interesting, a 2.5 inch SATA SSD. I did not expect that. I thought it was going to be an M SATA. So, oh, there we go. Whoop, that just unplugged the wireless. Didn't want to do that. At least we can get a better look at it now at the internals so it doesn't look too bad so we have a spear this looks like this must be our M SATA there so in fact I can go along and then pop in a Samsung 850 Evo in there if I wanted to and this drive here is interesting look at this I don't have any idea what brand that is a wolf on there I'll have to be checking out the speeds of that once I get this up and running. So they've actually used Kingston RAM, I can see. If you have a look right there. Let's get my stylus. So Kingston RAM, and I can't tell what brand the wireless chipset is there. And you see a small heatsink there on the um, chipset, and here's our big main cooler there. That's on the um, South Bridge or North Bridge, isn't it? I think. Wow. And here we can see real tech audio just there. And can't really make out anything else. Okay, so if later on I do go and decide to open it up, if I mean if the cooling's not up to the job or anything, I might check out and see what thermal pads they've used and pull this actually off. But at the moment we can see it does have right here, that's our intake. And then the exhaust is here, that's angling up, so that's where it vents out on the case. And we do have, by the looks of it, two SATA ports, just the one actually. So one SATA cable there. So overall, I mean, it doesn't actually look that bad at all to me. I think it's uh, well put together. Okay, so I'm going to get this started up and just have a quick run through and have a look at just how much free space we have and some minor benchmarks before later on I'll do my full review. So here we are in the BIOS. Just wanted to point out that when I turned it on, the fan shot up to about 100%, I think it was. It was quite loud. It's dropped back down to idle again, but it seems to just now and then cycle the fan speed up. So I'll go through some of these menus here very quickly so advanced we have our CPU configuration on everything that you can think of in a normal BIOS so it's all there power limits everything like that uh, overclocking lock well of course we can't overclock this CPU uh, chipset configuration a few things we can change here graphics I wonder if we can overclock so we're probably gonna have to use uh, Intel's overclocking utility I think for that 
the extreme overclocking utility. We might be able to tweak up the graphics, I think, on this certain Sauron, this particular Sauron model. I think we can do that. I will check that out later on. So just a few things there. Now have a look at our memory, what our memory speed is. Okay, so 1,333 megahertz. And the four gigs is the single dim there, which is going to be the weakness in the bottleneck of the system. Thermal memory configuration, power control. That is in a chipset. So there's a few onboard things there. Other, not going to touch any of that, of course. So boot, we do have boot by right options. Uh, security, boot override. And that's about it. So let's boot over now into Windows and see how long that takes to boot up and run through the device manager and a quick look at the free space. Discard changes and exit. All right, so a use is already created then 1900. Interesting. All right, so that powered up reasonably quick. Let's have a look and see what free available space we have. And uh, that's interesting, recent files. So this is definitely not a uh, clean install of Windows. I don't even know what that is. If someone understands Chinese, maybe they could point out what that is there. I, that could be drivers or something else that they were installing. Uh, so we have, okay, they've partitioned it. So we've only got 50 gigabytes on one partition and then the rest on the other. Um, that is not really ideal. I'm not really too happy with the fact that um, it was advertised as having an MSATA drive. So my plan would have been uh, to use the MSATA as the, the Windows disk, okay, so the operating drive, and then use a 2.5 inch terabyte drive maybe perhaps for storing media files. And I can't do that now because it only included a 2.5 inch SATA drive. Okay, so let's have a look at connect to the internet to activate Windows. Well, I've actually plugged in my uh, Ethernet cable to it, so that hasn't actually... Activation failed because the device doesn't have a valid entire IK product key. Okay, so they're not even using a valid uh, key or anything like that to install it, so you're going to have to factor that in as well into the cost there. You're going to need to probably supply or do a clean install actually would probably be better. So what I might do is I might just take a driver's dump of the setup at the moment. So at least I have the drivers then could do a fresh install of Windows because I'm not really too happy that's already been all set up. So that is not really good to see. So let's have a quick look in the device manager before ending this video. Have a look and see what we've got. So there is our Sauron definitely the advertised sound that they put in there, which is good. And have a look at that disk drive. So the Reino brand <laughs> that I've never heard of. And our wireless network adapters. So we have Realtek, Realtek, uh, Gigabyte Ethernet, which is good to see. And there is the wireless. So wireless in on there. And nothing really else out of interest I think no nothing else there so that's just the unboxing there the BIOS and initial first boot I will be back with a full complete review of this unit as well as testing out a little bit of gaming and I'll also see if I can try to overclock the graphics we can't uh, overclock the CPU on this model um, of Sauron but we can I think tweak and boost up maybe that uh, integrated graphics here so we'll see how well that performs so do stay tuned to the channel for those up and coming videos if you are interested thank you for watching bye for now